Okay guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Okay, so for today we're gonna do on another chapter, which is uh the notes and uh, the PDF file is also provided at the description box below. Okay, so for today we're gonna go for a form four, okay, chapter four uh, topic. Uh, this chapter is known as the periodic table. So let me just give you a brief idea about what is inside period table okay so first of all we always learn what group what periods okay so we're gonna learn group 8 uh, group 18 okay known as group 18 and then we learn group 17 we learn group 1 okay and we have to learn uh, period 3 okay and lastly we're gonna learn transition element okay transition elements so if you ask me there are how many subtopics in this uh, whole chapter here I will say this five is the most important one okay so group 1 Okay, group 17, group 18, period 3, and transition elements. So for this video for today, yeah, it's actually just a brief uh, revision. Okay, I will say a, a brief recap on what we actually learned in your uh, form 4, chapter 4, your group uh, 1 and group 17. Because these two these two groups are, <coughs> I will say, it's one of the uh, very common questions in SPM. Okay, they always ask you what is the difference between uh, group 1, what's the difference between group 17, okay? So... Okay, why do I put in comparison in this case here? Because group 1 and group 17, exam always asks, and they all, you all always try to uh, understand and you all always get confused. So for group 1 and group 17, uh, the main difference is, okay, in the group 1 element, so we have lithium, sodium, and potassium. And then for the other one, okay, group 17, we have fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Ma. Okay, so if you all know all these elements inside group, se group 17 and group 1, okay, that's the first thing you should, you, you should know for these two groups, okay. The next thing to know is group 1 and group 17, they actually having different uh, uh, different way to do, okay not. So for group 1, you see, uh, because group 1, they all have ending with 1 valence electron, while group 17 is ending with 7 valence electron. So if you look at the outermost shell, okay, so group 17 should have the, uh, it should have 7 valence electron, while group 1 only have 1 valence electron. So what we know is, in group 1, because he only have 1 valence electron, what do he want to do to achieve stable octet or duplet electron arrangement so for group one they want to do what what they want to do is they want to donate electrons okay now then for group 17 okay because you know that they are having seven valence electron so when they have seven valence electron what they're going to do is they want to become stable uh. they have to do the other way around they have to actually receive electron ah receive electron or gain electron so because they have different way to do to become stable because everything right here they are unstable so the reason they were, why they are unstable is because they don't have a uh, maximum number of electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, so what is the maximum number of electrons in a shell? If you are have, looking at the first shell, the maximum number of electrons is 2. Then if you are looking at the last shell, okay, the outermost shells beside the first shell, okay, uh, second shell onwards, the maximum number of electrons will be 8. Okay, now, so that's how you see, uh, this guy here, lithium, uh, he was 2.1 ma. Uh. So when you donate the electron away, oh, he will become into 2 electron. So he becomes stable. So same thing go for this sodium and 2.8.8.1. Okay, once you throw this one electron away, it becomes 2.8. So it's stable. Same thing goes for group 17. Let's say for this chlorine, it's 2.8.8.7. So to make it stable, I want to make this 7 become 8. So you have to gain one electron. Okay, now for group number 17. So if you're okay, this is all, all we're, we're going to learn about the basic things about group 1 and group 17. So what is the main question among these two groups will be this, we call it the reactivity. Okay, so what is the meaning of reactivity? Because if I take lithium, sodium, potassium, I throw into water, I do some chemical uh, experiment, you will see different, uh, I will say, uh, reactivity, different observation. So if, if you all remember that group 1, uh, if you throw into water, you will see that you will have hissing sound, you you will actually burn in flame. So all these things here is, you have to know that if you throw lithium into water, you will see the, the lithium on water, the reaction very slow. Okay? But sodium, you realize that the, the reaction is bigger. Potassium is the biggest reaction among the three elements here. So we understand that different elements, they have different reactivity when I throw into different, uh, in, into different reaction, into different experiments. So for here, why do I put them in compare? Because they are trying to do different stuff, right? Group 1 is trying to donate electron, while group 17 is trying to receive electron. Ah, so what we know is when going down the group means from lithium, sodium to potassium, the, does the reactivity increase or decrease? Ah, same thing goes for group 17. From fluorine, chlorine, bromine, okay, when I'm going down the group, does the, in, the reactivity increase or decrease? Okay, so for this case here, you see, yeah, for group 1, you can see that I highlight for you, the reactivity actually increased, but how? 
why? Ah, why is the main question in exam? Okay, now. So for here, we're going to actually have to explain in terms of five marks. So uh, for here, you can see that group one is trying to donate electron. Ma. So what we know is when you're going down the group, the atomic size of alkaline metal increases. Why? Because you're getting from two shell to three shell to four shell. You see the size become bigger. So when the size become bigger, okay, the single valence electron becomes further away from the nucleus, which is this electron that you wanted to donate. It's getting further away. Ah, so it's like you and your girlfriend are getting very far away. Easier for you all to break up. You get a point? So for here, so single valence electron because getting further away from the nucleus, the force of attraction between them. Okay, so in exam, ah, you must write between who and who. Okay, in exam, you must write between. You, know, you cannot just write force of attraction becomes weaker. No, you have to include the keyword force of attraction become uh, between nucleus and valence electron becomes weaker. Okay, because the force is weak, they can easily break up. So it is easier for the atom to donate its single valence electron to achieve stable duplet or octet electron arrangement. So because of the word easier, it's easier for you to do this. That's why reactivity increases. Okay, now, then for group 17, no, you see the balik, which is from fluorine, chlorine to bromine, the reactivity actually decreases. Means fluorine is the most reactive one, while bromine is the least reactive one, which is totally opposite from what we learned just now. Ah, lithium, sodium, potassium, oh, lithium is the least reactive one, while so, uh, potassium oh, is the most reactive one. So because of these two differences, ah, students always tend to forget which one is going down increase, which one is going down uh, decrease, okay? So which is I put in this table here to, to actually make you guys to uh, memorize and understand better, okay? So for group one, going down is reactivity increase because it's easier for the atom to donate the electrons. But if it's go for group 17, oh, they are trying to receive electron. So when they are trying to receive electron, going down the group, you can see that the outermost shell becomes further away from the nucleus. Do you see at number point number two, I don't talk about valence electron for group 17 because group 17, they are trying to receive electron to the last shell. So we call them the outermost occupied shell. Becomes further away. Uh, so when the last shell getting further away, uh, the strength for the nucleus to attract electron becomes weaker. So when the strength becomes weaker, now you think about it, I want to attract electron and my, and my force is weak. My strength is weak. So my, when my force is weak, it's harder for me to actually attract electrons. So it's harder for the halogen to attract electron to achieve stable octet or duplet electron arrangement. So when you see the word harder, reactivity decrease. Ah, so that's why I, I highlight these two words for you. Okay. How do I know who increase, who decrease? You try to understand when going on a group. Uh, is it easier or harder to do the stuff that you want to do? Which is group one, he is trying to donate. And when, go when going down the group, it is, it is getting easier to donate. So therefore, reactivity increase. But for group 17, because they are trying to receive electron, and you check off, going down the group 17, off, getting harder to receive electron. Off. So therefore, reactivity decreases. Okay. So this will be the two main difference in essay writing on uh, group 1 and group 17. Okay. So in exam, uh, they, they're not going to ask you two group together. Lah, uh, but instead, they will ask you one group. Okay. Maybe this exam, they ask you group 1. Maybe the next exam teacher asks you group 17, okay? So in different question, they will ask you in different group. But what, why do I put it here together? Is to make sure that you guys can actually understand the difference between group 1 reactivity and group 17 reactivity. Okay, so what we know is group 1 donate electron, group 7 receive electron. And these are all the keywords. And do you see if there's 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, there's a mistake here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is a 5. Okay, so in this question right here, normally in uh, paper 2, Okay, it will be normally around 3 to 4 marks. If you are going for essay, sometimes it's 5 marks. Okay, so it's actually quite a lot. Okay, so guys, don't give up on this question. Make sure you understand it. You can write out all the keywords again. Okay? So the keyword will be atomic size, increase, single valence electron becomes further away from the nucleus, force becomes weaker, easier for you to donate electron. While for group 17, size increase again. Okay, but now we are going to talk about outermost occupied shell becomes further away from a nucleus the strength becomes weaker harder to attract electron okay so these are all the keywords that you can use in your exam to try to build sentence okay make sure that you you, uh, you receive electron and donate electron is to achieve stable octet electron arrangement achieve stable octet or duplet electron arrangement so make sure you have to include these keywords inside to achieve what arrangement okay 
can uh, so for this will be the uh, reactivity which is very common in exam but the next page uh, you will see that I give you two things okay some physical properties differences okay in atomic radius melting and boiling point the density difference the hardness and the colors okay so I will leave this to you all because it's just a very uh, easy things to do uh, thing to do because in exam they'll just ask you uh, give me three physical properties of group one give me three uh, physical properties of group 17 okay so uh, main thing they will ask in exam will be the melting point and boiling point this one very common in exam so you can put a put a star for here very common in exam if you're okay then we have pivot tree ah, so for pivot tree what will happen is in pivot tree we actually have a uh, very common question is where they always ask you about the atomic radius and electronegativity so i'm just going to explain about uh, atomic radius because this is one of very co very common question in the exam so for going across pivot tree because period right now you are going from uh, from the left to the right okay of the of the period, period table so let's say for pure tree, I have sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. So when going across pivot tree, okay, do you see the size getting smaller? Okay, but what do you know about pivot tree? So about pivot tree is we know that every element here they all have three shells. Unlike group one, group is going down more and more shell. But pivot tree is everyone here is the same shell. Means that here everyone has three shells. So why the size actually decrease? Since everyone have the same number of shells, why why do they actually decrease? Try not. So the reason is here. Yeah. So when you're going across pivot tree, as you check the proton number and electron number, you realize that you have for sodium it's eleven proton. Okay. Magnesium is twelve proton. Aluminium thirteen proton. So what happens is when you go from left to the right, proton number increases. So the keyword is when proton number and the positive charge increase. Okay. Because proton number carries positive charge, right? So proton number increase, positive charge increase. Okay. So when this thing actually uh, increase, when your positive charge increase, imagine positive charge is like it's like a magnet. So because you know that proton is actually uh, located in the middle of the nucleus, right? They are attracting all these electrons. So imagine that when the number of proton inside the nucleus increase, you are getting more attractive force. So therefore, strength to uh, attract electrons becomes stronger. When you have stronger force to attract electrons. You have stronger force to pull your electron closer to you. So you see, electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus. Therefore, atomic radius decrease. So this is one of a very common question uh, in exam for about pivot tree and also for your react, uh, electron negativity. Very similar, okay? Because going across the period, electron negativity is about the strength to attract electrons. Okay, so getting to the right, more proton, more strength to attract electrons. So going to the right electronegativity increases okay so therefore what we, i have i included in this video is about some just some brief information about group one group 17 and pivot tree so of course definitely this video is not about everything inside this uh, uh this chapter okay so make sure guys this is just uh, a brief uh revision for you all okay so the rest of your studies okay what is the more details about group one group 18 okay other stuff right please do your own revision okay so what happened is uh i will say please make sure can you can do reactivity this is very important so i will say that's all for this video i will see you in my next video thank you guys bye bye